Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an introduction to the statement of cash flows. This topic is covered in introductory accounting course, intermediate accounting, as well as the CPA exam, the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover. If you like my recording, please like them, share them. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth, especially during those coronavirus days. Follow me on Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education and or pass your CPA exam. If you're looking for those 10 to 15 extra points to pass the CPA exam, I'm here to help you check out my website. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the purpose of the statement of cash flows. What is the purpose of it? So from a business perspective, if you're an analyst, if you are a user of this financial statement, what is the purpose of it? Well, it tells us where, how does a company receive its cash? So we have cash coming in. How? How are we getting this cash? Is it from sales? Is it from common stock? Is it from debt? Where is the cash coming from? That's important. And the cash flow statement would clearly shows us where is this cash coming from. Also, why do income and cash flow differ? So what do I mean by this? When you prepare the income statement, you come up with number called net income or net loss for that purpose. Then the statement of cash flow, it's going to tell us how much of that net income is actually cash. Huh? Well, remember, the income statement use accrual accounting the cash flow uses cash accounting so it's going to convert the accrual to cash then it's going to tell you whether or not on a cash basis you are making money not only on an accrual basis on a cash basis it's also going to explain the change in the cash balance so how much cash did i have last period versus this period and this is the whole purpose is to explain the change in cash and by explaining the change in cash we're going to break it down into separate categories to determine what happened to our cash from one period to the other. And obviously it's going to tell us where are we spending the cash? Who are we paying for our cash? Are we spending it on employees, on supplies, on paying debt, on buying back our own stock? Where is the cash going? So where are we spending our cash? So it practically answers a lot of important questions. And that's why it's a very important financial statement in the real world. So it helps users decide whether the company has enough cash to pay its debt. So before you lend money to the company, the first thing you do is you look at their cash flow. Do they have enough cash to pay me back? That's a big question. Okay. Well, will tell us whether the company's ability to pursue unexpected opportunities. Do we have extra cash? Okay. Or what we called free flow of cash. Do we have that free flow of cash in case an opportunity presented itself do we have cash to take advantage of it okay managers plan day-to-day -day operation well having a statement of cash flow it's going to help managers determine how much cash that's coming how much cash we are spending so we make sure we don't run out of cash in our day-to-day -day operation and also for long-term investments we need cash because when we buy property plant and equipment those are long-term investments do we have enough cash to comply or not to comply to reach our purpose to reach our goal in terms of long-term investments now how do we measure cash so what is ac actually considered cash as far as cash well obviously cash is if you have actual cash we are all familiar with cash paper cash coins uh, checking account savings account all sorts of things now in addition to cash itself we could have short-term highly liquid investments like what like treasury bond if we lend money to the government if we lend money to the government what's going to happen that's not considered cash that's considered cash equivalent because cash is easy here's cash we can always see touch see the cash but there are something called cash equivalent and what are cash equivalent well long-term treasury bond uh, no, not, not long term short-term treasury bond actually certificate of deposit cd at the bank those are cash equivalent so how do we define something cash equivalent they're short term usually less than 90 days highly liquid it means they can be converted to cash very quickly 
they are readily readily convertible to cash and they are so close to maturity that the market value does not fluctuate in other words the changes in interest rate don't affect the cd don't affect treasury bond why because they have a short-term maturity 90 days and they will mature so it's not a big deal so when we say cash what we mean is cash plus cash equivalent so cash plus cash equivalent is what we are looking for the change now the statement of cash flow classify the changes in cash into three categories and we're going to look we're going to be looking under those three categories in detail we're going to devote devote a lecture for each of these categories in this session i'm going to give, give you an overview over each category one is operating activities two investing activities three financing activities and what i'm going to do i'm going to explain each one of those separately in this session then the next session i will devote one section about operating activities another section about investing and a third section about financing and maybe i will work an example that combine all those three sections together starting with operating activities so to illustrate or to make the point i'm going to assume we're going to be dealing with a restaurant business so but take this restaurant business and illustrate this concept to any business you can think of when we think of operating activities, think of the word operating. When you operate your business, what do you do? Well, let's look at a restaurant. When you operate your business, you need employees, you need supplies. You, I'm sorry, you need the goods, uh, goods to uh, uh, goods to uh, to serve the customers. You need supplies, right? You need you need all sorts of uh, all sorts of Let's start by looking at operating activities. And from the word operating, what should you be thinking of? How do we operate the business? Well, how do we operate the business? Well, think of a restaurant. If we are dealing with the restaurant, you need employees to run the restaurant. You need supplies like plates, uh, forks, knives, so on and so forth. You need you need inventory of goods, inventory of food that you can cook into finished meals. So those are the things that you will need. And to acquire all of those, you're going to have to pay for them. So for operating activities, we're going to have for, for every activity, we're going to have two categories, an inflow of cash, which is a cash plus and an outflow of cash. So for a restaurant or for any business, the outflow of cash will involve paying suppliers for goods and services. If you need to buy the supplies like plates, utensils, forks, knives. Well, you need to pay for those. So that's that's going to reduce your cash. You need to pay salaries and wages. These individuals that work here that are producing the food, they need to be paid. Well, you need utilities. You need to pay for operating expenses like lights, utilities in general. You need utilities to operate the restaurant you need to pay utilities also when you make a profit you have to pay taxes on that profit you also have to pay interest on the debt and that's considered operating activity so any of these activities it's going to consume cash it's going to consume cash now that's that's kind of not the bad news that's like that they think we don't like about the business but at the same time we're going to have an inflow section the inflow section usually comes from these people people that comes to your restaurant and they pay for their food and their drinks so it's going to come from cash sales to customers collection on credit sales so basically those two are related because after you after you sell the customer on credit they will pay you so basically cash from customers receipts of interest revenue let's assume you have some money in the bank that money generated interest well that's interest revenue now, now bear in mind i am dealing with us gap the united states generally accepted accounting principle, the cash flow statement. Also, if you receive any cash from dividend revenue, if you have some stocks, you invested in stocks, and your stocks paid you some extra cash and dividend, that's also considered operating. But generally speaking, when we think about a business, their main source of revenue is cash from customers and cash collected on account. It also cash from customers so those are the big two big pluses the other one are like small pluses for most businesses they might have some extra money invested in the banks they might have some money invested in the stocks and it pays dividend or they generate revenue from the from the bonds but that's minor so what we do is is we net those two out so if net cash flow is ten thousand cash flow is ten thousand and cash outflow is four thousand 
that's really good it means net we have six thousand as a net 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 operating activities and we're going to learn exactly how do we prepare the section later on but i want you to think of the operating activities and by the way i should have mentioned this earlier when you think of the operating activities think of the income statement because what goes on the income statement it's when you operate the business it think of cash inflow as in quote revenue but it's all in cash think of cash outflow as expenses in quote but all in cash, converting all your revenues in cash, converting all your expenses in cash, and finding out on a cash basis, do you have more revenue cash than expense cash? And obviously you want to have more revenues than expenses in cash. Now, when you think about investing activities, here's what you want you to think of. I want you to think of two things. The physical structure of the building, property, plant, and equipment. So this is Olive Garden, an Italian restaurant. The building that they operate in, is property plant and equipment so for the restaurant to buy this building they have to to buy the building they have to spend cash so this is the minus to buy this building they have to pay cash usually that's the, the largest component of a typical company now also olive garden they can buy long-term investments they can buy stocks and bonds and listen to me carefully of other companies so olive garden they can buy apple stocks microsoft amazon google netflix they can make investments okay they can buy those investments as long term or short term it doesn't matter so when they buy stocks when they buy stocks they have to pay cash so it's an outflow of cash okay also they can loan money for notes receivable simply put they give you money you have to pay them back the money plus interest so they are making an investment that's why it's called the investing activities and they can buy also intangible asset intangible asset think of them very similar to buy tangible asset like plant assets okay so those are the outflow section of the investing activities now just like we have outflow we have also an inflow and the inflows are the exact opposite of the outflow what are the inflow of cash well now we bought the building we could also do what we can turn around and sell this building when we sell this building when we sell this building we're no longer operating it's going to bring cash to it's going to bring cash to uh, the olive garden well just like we bought the stocks now we can sell them we can sell all these investments we can sell our short-term investments we can sell our long-term investments so notice they're the opposite of the outflow they're the opposite of the outflow we can sell them also we can collect our note remember we we lend money it was a cash outflow then when we collect the money it's a cash inflow also any intangible we can sell it and also we can sell the note if we have any promise somebody promised to pay us and we can't wait we can sell this promise to someone else and get our money now this is this process is called discounting that's also part of investing activities so simply put what are we looking at when we deal with investing activities simply put we are looking at two categories two main categories one and two and we'll see those later on when we look at our when we look at our uh, at this section specifically but i just want to plant the seed look at your property plant and equipment pp and e and look at your investments investments and stocks and bonds investments in other companies stocks and bonds and when you invest in bonds simply put you are lending money so this is what you are looking at either property plant and equipment or investments in stocks and bonds those are the two main categories that you deal with when you are dealing with investments if you acquire property plant and equipment it's a negative cash when you sell them it's positive same thing with investments when you acquire investments it's negative cash when you sell this investments it's positive cash the third and last category the last category in the cash flow statement according to us gap is the financing activity and the word financing is how do you finance your business well how do you finance your business think about it how do we finance our business we finance our business by issuing stocks and bonds and when we say bonds bonds the same thing as borrowing bonds is a form of borrowing so this is how we raise money so so under financing activities we're going to bring cash from issuing our own stocks whether it's common 
or preferred. That's going to bring us cash, cash inflow. We're going to, we're going to issue short term debt or we can issue long term debt. It doesn't matter. When we issue debt, it means we're borrowing money. Also, the owner could contribute money, very similar to issuing stocks to the owner. Or we could reissue our own treasury stocks. So if we have any treasury stocks, stocks that we purchased in the past, if we resell it, it's going to bring us cash. Those are the inflow of cash. Well, what are the outflow of cash? They're the exact opposite. They're the exact opposite. Well, notice we said we can issue stocks, but also we can buy it back. So after we issue the stock, we can, we can per repurchase the stock. When we repurchase the stock, it's an outflow of cash. Cash would leave the company. Just like the owner contributed the money, the owners can withdraw the money. That's an outflow of cash. Just like we issued short-term debt, we borrowed money. Now we pay off short-term and long-term debt. They're exactly the opposite. And when we issue stocks, we have to pay dividend. Dividend is an outflow of cash. Basically, they're opposite of each other. And that's why it's very important to understand that raising money, it's an inflow of cash. And how do you raise money? When you issue, when you issue, when you sell your own stocks, and your own bonds and I emphasize own the company own stocks and own bonds because if it's other companies look other companies goes under investing activities it goes here but when you're dealing with your own stocks and your own bonds you are investing your you are financing your own company then at some point you're gonna pay back the investors you're gonna pay back the creditor and that's outflow of cash one last thing about the statement of cash flow is some activities on the statement of cash flow is considered non-cash investing and financing. What do we mean by non-cash? Non-cash means something happened. It either changes, it changed our investing or financing or both at the same time, but it did not involve cash. That's why it's called non-cash. Like what? Well, retirement of debt by issuing stocks. Well, let's assume you have a debt. You have a loan of, you have a bond, and it's a million dollar bond. You don't have the money to pay the bondholder. What you would say, you would tell the bondholder, give me the bond, I'm gonna debit bonds payable, a million, and I'm gonna give you instead common stock that's worth a million. What did I do here? I retired my bond by issuing stocks. No cash is involved. Is this a financing or is this and investing well this is basically a finance uh, financing but it's a non-cash financing financing also you convert your preferred stock into a common stock you have preferred stock you took them back and you issue common stock it's investing activity but non-cash lease of assets and a capital lease transaction you leased a building you leased a vehicle well guess what you have the asset you did not pay any cash because Today, you did not pay any cash. Now you have the asset and you have the liability, but no cash was involved. You purchase a long-term asset by issuing a note or a bond. Like you bought a piece of land, you debit land for a million. You credit notes payable for a million. Well, you bought the land, okay, land which is a an investing, land which is an investing activity. Sorry. Land is an investing activity, INV. And notes payable is a financing activity. So notice one is an investing, one is financing, but neither did not involve any cash. Or the exchange of non-cash asset with another non-cash asset. You exchange an old truck or two old trucks or three old trucks with a new truck. You'll exchange them. You have a new asset, but you did not really pay any cash. Basically, it's an investing activity, but it's a non-cash. Or you purchase non-cash asset by issuing equity or debt. So you bought some vehicle a building but you did not pay cash you issued equity you issued stocks or you issued debt what do we do with those activities those non-cash activity we disclose them we disclose them because if we don't disclose them if somebody looking at, at the cash flow statement and we did not tell them about the non-investing and financing activities they're going to be confused because the cash flow statement if and if someone knows how to read the cash flow statements it should make any sense so if anything is missing from it you'll be able to notice fairly quickly that something is missing if you have any questions any comments by all means let me know in the next recording i would look at the operating section as always i would like to remind you to like the recording visit my website subscribe 
stay safe, study hard. You're going to study for your CPA once in your lifetime. Don't take any shortcuts. Check out my website. I'm here to help you succeed and stay safe.